Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me in a brand new location actually that I'm out scouting at the moment for autumn colours. And while I was out, I said I'd give something a go and just do a bit of a comparison. If you might have noticed on one of my previous videos, I'm using a different camera. And the camera I'm using actually is the Canon R5. I've been quite lucky, Canon Ireland to give me an opportunity to try it out and see what I think of it. And so far actually it's quite impressive, but it got me thinking. How much of a difference actually is there between the R5 and my own R? So what I've done is I've set both cameras up, as you can see, side by side, and I'm going to set them up on exactly the same settings and take exactly the same shot at the same time. And we'll see, is there actually a difference? Will you be able to tell the difference or will I be able to tell the difference between the R and the R5 images? So let's go, let's see how this gets on today. So I've both cameras now set up. This one here is the R and I'm using the 15 to 35, it's a 2.8 lens. On the, this side here, my right, your left, is my EOS R and I'm using my 16 to 35 F4. So what I've done is I've put both cameras to give them an equal opportunity, both on F4, I have them both at 20 mil and I'm looking at a scene then, which has got a couple of different interesting things to be able to look at within the image. There's not much really in regards to light as well, so it's a nice flat day, so I think it will be a nice even cover as well of light. But we've got some pillars that are running around on the right hand side. We've got a very, very large tree as well that's in the distance. So what I've done is I've set up the photo in exactly the same composition and I'll show you now the composition on both cameras next. I've got both cameras now set up side by side as you can see and you can almost kind of make out the frame or the, the scene that I'm looking at. To frame the photos as well I've more or less matched them up as well. This one here is slightly off because it's to the right hand side it's getting a couple more of those pillars but what I've decided to do now is set them both at exactly the same settings. So this is the 15 to 35 and it's a 2.8 lens. This is the 16 to 35 and it's an F4 lens. So I put both cameras on F4 and then I have exactly the same shutter speed of 1 125th of a second and ISO is 100. And I've set both cameras up now as well that they're both um, going to be on touch screen. So it will enable me to be able to take that image and then not have to worry about delay or anything like that in regards to each of them. So what I'll do now is I'll take that shot and then we'll see the differences between both. So, both cameras here, when I go to playback mode, are showing me that the highlights are blown. So what I'll do now is I will take the exposure down on both, and then we will see what both will be like. Now, and interesting actually, this is telling me it's two stops overexposed, yet this is one and a half. So I'm going to reduce down my shutter speed, and I'm going to get that exactly on the exposure meter. And the same on this, this is 1 250th, this is 1 400th. So I'll bring that to 1 400th as well, which is actually interesting because that is perfectly exposed, that's underexposed. But I'll take both the images now, there's nothing blown, so there should be no highlight alert after this. And we'll review both the images. Okay, yeah, none of them have a highlight alert. And what I'll do now is I'll process both images and see if you can tell which is which from which camera. Next scene now that I'm doing is I've set the camera up on pretty much the photographer's favorite, or the landscape photographer's favorite aperture, which is f8. So the EOS R is on f8 and the EOS R5 is on f8. Both of them now as well are at 1 40th of a second for exposure. And similar to the last, I've composed them pretty much the same. Interesting thing here is when I take a meter reading, it's one and a half stops underexposed here and it's a half a stop underexposed on the R5. So not quite sure actually why that is, but we'll take these shots anyway again and I'll focus on the same place, which is the tree that I'm going to look at here. And we'll see then which shot can you tell. Both actually are telling me that the highlights were over overblown. So what I'll do again is I'll change that and bring that down lower and look at the histogram. And the histogram is telling me that now it's okay. And if I do the same on the um, 
R5, bring it to 180, and now I'll take the same shot again and we'll see how that turns out. Next scene now is I've come up to two trees that are here and I want to be able to look at something which is the aperture that most people think is going to give you the best depth of field. So I'm at f11 at the moment. I've got both cameras at 1 1 15th of a second. Both are on ISO 100 and I've both composed the shots well exactly the same way. So I'm going to focus one third into the shot and we'll see how these ones turn out. Next thing now that I'm doing here is I have bought the cameras pretty close to one of the large trees and I switched them both now into manual focus and I've got again the settings are exactly the same way. Histograms actually are very very similar on this occasion so what I'll do is I'll take the photograph and then I'll see the difference between the two of those as well because what I'm hoping is to see is there'll be more clarity in the R5 because it's a 45 megapixel image whereas the R is a 35 megapixel image so it should be a clearer image on this one but again let's see if you can tell. final test now I think I'm going to do is a very complicated scene. So there's a tree of a branch now that's rolling over the river and what I've done as again with the other ones is I've composed them more or less exactly the same. I've got exactly the same settings as well and I'm still using the manual focus and you can look on both here the focus peaking all the screen is completely red so everything should be in focus but it'd be interesting to see is there much difference in the detail now between both the shots so i'll take this one here now and we'll focus in the same place and now let's see if there's a difference in those shots So that was quite interesting actually to look at the different images and compose them in exactly the same way with two different cameras. Now I made a video in the past as to why the EOS R was the camera for me but like I said from the outset I've been lucky I had an opportunity to try the R5 so it's been interesting for me to be able to look and see the differences between the images 
I don't even know if there's going to be much differences right now. Maybe there's a lot, maybe there's very little. Um, but it's quite interesting to see when you look at the, value, the price of each of these cameras. So this is the EOS R, it's my own camera, that retails for 1,799 euros or there thereabouts. And the EOS R5 is almost 5,000 euros, 4,900. So quite a considerable difference in relation to it. Now, for me, I use my camera for imaging. Now, there are good advantages with the technology that's in the R5, and also from a video point of view, it can uh, shoot into 8K. Dynamic range as well is something which, you know, I haven't really had an opportunity to do because it's flat light today, but I think it's something that the R5 might actually trump the R on. But it's been a, an interesting experiment anyway. How did you get on? How many images did you get right of the ones that I would have shown? Let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to finish up this episode of my vlog. Thank you very, very much as always for joining me. If it's your first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange voll.